Looking back on how far I've come in the last few years of my life, never in my wildest dreams would I tell you that I would be able to drive anything that remotely looks like a Group B rally car. These positions were for those who've earned it, three years of accomplished stage wins. But here I am, soaking up all of New Zealand's beauty, while filming a car that defines the splendor of the sport I adore. It truly doesn't get much better than this. I'm sitting right now in Alancia Delta, which many of you will remember dominated the World Rally Championship in the mid-1980s. And Lancia as a brand has always interested me because, well, so much domination and really nowadays so little recognition. I mean, basically they just build rebadged Fiat's and Chrysler's and stuff in Europe. But the point is, is this brand was so focused in the motorsports, particularly rally, through so many different generations of car. You start with the Fulvia, and then the Stratos, the 037, the Delta S4, Integrale four-wheel drive, Integrale 16V, all of which were just so good at what they did. And furthermore, when they went into Group S, which didn't happen because Group B was insane, um, the, the production of that Delta was just, you know, even more and more crazy to the point where, you know, they were killing people because the cars were just absolutely nuts <laughs> and the regards for safety kind of went out the window but I mean just perfect placement of engineering and ingenuity and and all of that is gone and so well anyway I'm in the North Island of New Zealand and there is somebody very very special building something very very special and well It'll bring back a few generations, and let's go check it out. I was off on a borrowed Delta in search of what I actually came to the North Island for, the Lancia 037. But while I was at it, I was enjoying the Delta very much. Once Group B was cancelled in 1986, the Delta reclaimed top honors. Rally was back to production cars. So starting off my trip from the airport to Alan Carter's Lancia home garage in the middle of the North Island, you could bet I was feeling a bit honored. I think the Delta is one of the coolest hatches ever produced, especially when talking about the Evo and Evo 2 models. The wider track really made these things look badass. And with a big turbocharger and well thought out differential design, they put the power down. By the end of their production, the top of the line Delta was producing 212 horsepower and 232 foot-pounds of torque. The Delta line of rally cars are responsible for 46 WRC victories in the late 80s to the early 90s. This one isn't an Integrale or an Evo, it's just a front-wheel drive model. But driving around New Zealand's countryside had me pretending I was Marco Olen in the inaugural season for Group A Deltas, 1987. I was instructed to drive this car to a Douglas DC3, then go up a hill where I'd see a sign I couldn't miss. It was here at a small horse farm where I would finally meet up with Alan and his family. This is the home of Carter Rooney, a business formed by the Carters for the means of recreating the finest Lancia builds the world has ever seen. Their prized possessions, along with the 037, include a Stratos and an HF2000. 
Back in November 97, uh, my wife and I decided that we needed to start a business. And that was a business set up to service uh, vehicles in the rural area that we find ourselves in. During that time we started collecting Lancia cars, mainly the Beta range of cars and there are several models in that range and uh, Alex and I collected one of each model and then subsequently other variants and, and uh, doubled up our numbers and that sort of thing and then we found that we could supply other people with parts for their Beatas. I put my bags down and moved in for a few weeks. My plan was to help Alan with whatever he needed. I wanted to learn the brand from experience, and I wanted to work on a 037. Alan and his wife Alex built a central garage for enthusiasts. Their determination for creating all sorts of cool projects attracted their friend Marty to move down from Auckland and start work on the 037. Marty's resume was filled with over 20 years of creating one car, his dream Stratos, which he did, all from scratch. The Stratos to me embodies um, agility, um, strength, speed, um, handling prowess in the mountains, um, and it just, uh, to me it's like the perfect car because it's also quite practical. When I first met Marty I was astonished by his craftsmanship. The Stratos he built is almost completely dimensionally accurate. Keep in mind this was built by one man's two hands. The chassis and fiberglass work are perfected Donatello sculptures. The buck was built around the principle of uh, boat building, I suppose, where you have a centre line and then different sections building it, building it up and then um, cladding that with plywood and then um, filler and all sorts of things like that. Um, so you have to build the buck first and then you take moulds of the, all the outer skins and you have to take cut everything and do all the returns as well as the, the roof and everything like that and work out what the doors look like on the inside because I didn't have any idea about that and then you've got to make the final copy which is this and then you have to make the chassis work out where all the suspension goes. I was lucky enough to have a, um, a workshop manual uh, which had nice diagrams of all the suspension angles and everything so copied that. Um, I couldn't afford a Dino Ferrari motor so um, I used an Ansia Thema V6 which is a 90 degree V6. Um, very light motor and very torquey motor which is good. And mated that to a Lancia Beta gearbox. Um, and the rest basically follows exactly what Lancia have done. So the car was so successful um, that it's a bit silly to try and change what they've done and they've developed because it works so well. I just keep this as a club uh, car, as a tarmac car maybe. Um, I don't really want to throw it against the bank or into, uh, into a tree or something. It's very easy to do. Um, so. I think with a 037 it would be the ideal sort of um, rally car in that it's not too complicated, it's relatively cheap to maintain, um, it's not as technically complicated as um, a four wheel drive car um, and it'd be one hell of a lot of fun to drive um, because you can hold some lovely big slides in it I'm sure. Marty said to us in passing, oh you're into beaters and that sort of thing. Um, you should build a 037 and, and we thought oh yeah that'd be cool that'd be cool but we didn't really think about it too much until, uh, until the time came when we needed this eye-catching car again you know we needed something to project our company further ahead and to highlight the abilities that we had as, as restorers. The 037 was the last rear-wheel drive car to win a WRC event outright. It was also the leading example to which other manufacturers would start to follow, mid-engine mounting for a Group B rally car. The 037 started as a mid-engine transaxle car with a 2.0 liter four-cylinder motor based off the one found on the 131 Abarth. However, the 037 was supercharged. The body itself was basically a new generation of the Lancia Stratos. 
With 037s, you have a metal center tub from a Monte Carlo and a tubular front and rear space frame. On top of the space frame sits fiberglass body panels. It's a common construction of many types of circuit cars. In fact, when I got to the States, I realized that the Global Rally Cross Lights cars are built in a much similar way. To get the fiberglass molds correct requires an expert, but Alan already knew where to look. He decided to build a 037 and he asked me just jokingly if I'd like to do the bodywork and I said and I said jokingly, yeah, when I finish my car. Not long after we'd started with this project uh, and we were in contact with another guy in New Zealand who was very keen to also build a 037 uh, car, a, a recreation as we're calling it. and. Uh, and he'd found a, uh, an original car in Australia. So, uh, so Nick and I uh, flew, flew to Sydney and we went and had a look at the car. And at that time, uh, the car had its engine and gearbox out of it. So it made it a lot easier to get a, you know, a, a very accurate measurement of what the space frame and that sort of thing was like and what the geometry was going to be. Unbeknownst to us, Marty had taken some measurements off another Monte Carlo that was up in Auckland and he'd started to build the front uh, clip, this front panel, uh, which hinges uh, on, on the, uh, the very front of the, the space frame of the car. I cobbled together a, a front clip and uh, a friend of mine and I brought it down on the back of a van, or well, actually on the roof of a van, and um, presented it to him with great surprise. It was good fun. They had this front for a 037, and we were just blown away. You know, what do you know? It fits, and it's, it was starting to look like a 037. It was uh, a bit of a turning point for, for me because uh, I, I was very confident that we could build the chassis and and the mechanical components that, that go with the chassis to make the car. But the body was something that I hadn't, I hadn't gone into a lot of thought about and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at that point in my mind when I was thinking about the car. Uh, we, we got some financial backing behind us and that enabled us to offer Marty a full-time position with us and uh, we were able, with Marty's um, expert work uh, able to get um, a set of production moulds together um, to allow us to uh, produce panels uh, to clients who wanted to build a 037 like ours. What well, be of course is tightening right handed downhill with a bit of gravel and inside don't cut but co-driver he slack ass bastard and tell me wrong instruction it is left flat big small accident of course only rolling five times now of course we are chasing water roll we have big fight last night you know he take one stage i take another but we have uh but we made the michelle mouton yeah and uh, the brizia fonds they're pretty nice girls the customer can specify the color of the body panel um, from a color chart and uh and when they pop them out of the mold and buff them up um, they come out shiny like this. The, these these panels here on this car that you see here, they are uh, they've just been buffed by FDL, who who make the panels for us, and uh, and that's it. We haven't needed to polish them or anything, um, and yeah, it's great. You don't have to paint the car, which is a bonus. You know, I'm not really into painting cars. It's, it's a, a necessary evil with restoration that you, you have to paint cars. But with these uh, panels, no, it's not a problem. When I arrived in the beginning of July, all the molds of the car were done. The engine was in place. The car was actually assembled once before, but not perfected. It was thrown together for a car show. When I met up with Alan, the plan was to spend the next two weeks perfecting the car so it was reliable and could be driven hard. When I first walked into the shop, the sight of the 037 opened up was breathtaking. I felt like I stepped back in time. The 037 is quite literally a go-kart when there are no body panels on it. I spent the next couple of days looking the car over, examining the detail. 
When you usually see replicas of cars, most of the time the look is the only piece that is remotely close to the original. But this car, I assure the purists, is as good as it can get. Especially on a mechanics budget. Almost every part of the car is factory Lancia or a bar. The engine block is the same block that would have been in the real 037, minus the 16 valve Abarth head. This car has an 8 valve Volumex head, which can be easily upgraded to the Abarth head. Because like most things in motorsports, if you want more power, all you have to do is write the check. This holds true with the supercharger on this car as well. This one is also out of a Volumex. The gearbox is out of a Lancia Gamma and mounted to the rear of the car to Gamma hubs and axles. The roll cage is spec Corsa from Lancia, however has updates to meet the current FIA requirements. The dashboard is also modeled off the Group B car, and has a Barth steering wheel and gauge cluster that were designed and manufactured from the same group of people that made the equipment in the 80s. The wheels are straight out of Italy. They're replicas of the original tarmac wheel designed on a 5-axis CNC machine. But the rear suspension is my favorite. Because, well, it's new old stock. The dual dampers with the mid-coil spring was pretty advanced technology for rally cars in the 80s, and it works so well, which I'll explain more later. There are, however, some parts that aren't Italian. Basically two main parts. One is the steering rack that is out of a Subaru, and the other is the Mazda brake calipers. But the all-time best thing that Allen did while building the body was leaving most of the original mounting points for the original parts. So if a factory steering rack or other part comes available, it could easily be mounted into the place that it belongs. As the second week rolled on, the car was starting to look less and less like a go-kart and more like a curvy, gravel-slinging Italian. She was almost ready to drive. I remember waking up in Mangawika that morning. I had only been staring at this car for two weeks, but I was so eager to see this thing go. I couldn't imagine waiting six years for this moment. I loaded up the backpack and walked out to the Delta. I was about to witness something few people will ever see. When I pulled into the shop, Alan was washing the car. It looked so real, flashing its martini livery in the morning sunlight as if it had its own smile on it. It was ready to rally. Granted, today was only a test, but it was pretty much Group B in my eyes. As we loaded up and towed out to the site, I followed in the Delta. The big wing on the 037 was something I stared at the entire drive. It was that wing that really made this car iconic. I was a one-man show, which meant that while filming the car, I wasn't driving it. In other words, I didn't expect to drive it at all. However, what I was about to witness I would easily remember for the rest of my life.
got a few good shots in. Then the light got flat. Alan pulled over and asked if I wanted a ride while the light was bad. Sure, I jumped in. We only got a few kilometers down the road when he pulled over into a gravel pit. Then he said, All right, now you drive. I cannot describe to you how nerve-wracking it is to drive someone's personal creation of which there is only one. I could feel my hands sweating on the wheel. I had a good hour or so of really getting to figure out this car. Since I didn't have driving shoes, I had to take my shoes off to avoid my foot getting stuck between the brake and the gas. As I drove around, one sentence kept coming into my mind. This car just sits. I have no idea what I meant by this, but that's how I came to describe it. When you throw this car into a corner, you can almost feel the back end sit and hold you in place. There's no real body roll, and there's no stepping out. The 037 is truly the best handling car I've ever driven. And I'm not the only one on the drive team who's impressed. Remember Chris's episode? Yeah, that's quite alarming actually. I'm not going to talk about the car, I'm just going to keep praying. This thing is electric. The corner speeds. And you can just hear the supercharger. I can barely hear myself. I think it has to be said. Oh my god, that was fast. That was fast. That was fast. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. What a car! What a car! The balance! That is okay. The fast to change the direction is okay. Yeah. At the day's end, there was one last surprise. A muddy paddock waited for me. It was my last send-off before washing the 037 off and putting it away. I was leaving to head back to New York in the morning. New Zealand was a life-changing experience. The 037 was the final chapter. I hope to come back someday. But in the meantime, someone please invest in another handmade 037. Alan and Marty are ready to make someone else's Group B dreams come true. I never thought it possible for the number of Group B spec rally cars to increase. But then again, history is always repeated. If you're in New Zealand for the Otago Rally this coming May, be sure to watch Alan 037 hit gravel for the first time as a course car. At this point, things are looking up for Carter Rooney. With one car done, it's anybody's guess what the future can hold. As I jumped on the plane to head back to the States, I couldn't believe six months was over. But I was ready to finish where I left off. When I get back to New York, it was time to start racing my Impreza at home. That'll be next time.
would help make the car as accurate uh, a recreation as we possibly could get. And, uh, and this, by the way, is Mitty's. She, uh, she helps keep, keep the, uh, the mouse population under control. And, uh, and that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but all of that engineering, and are you kidding me? It's hailing. Well, that's, that's not good. <laughs>